I promise you that Jeremy and I will be represented fairly in my post. Boom. Okay. But you won't be. is Bad Voltage in 2019. Yes, it is. I know. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Feels like ages since we've done a show. It does. It is. Yeah, well, we missed the last one, didn't we? I can't remember why. Oh, because it was because of the because it was Christmas and holidays and whatever else. Yes. However, you celebrate it. So yeah, we weren't we weren't recording. We weren't recording on Christmas Day. No, we were not. So no. Yes. So in this show, we are um, as is traditional for the first show back in the new year. We're going to look back at the predictions that we made last year about what would happen mm. in 2018 and see how fantastically correct we all were. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Sure, we've done very, very well because we I, usually I predict do. you're correct there. <laughs> and first incorrect prediction of the show. <laughs> <laughs> but more importantly, we have some interesting news. We do. We do. Yes. Um, so uh, we have in the past done a live show at uh, the SoCal Linux Expo in California. Uh, in Pasadena specifically, and we're delighted to announce that we are going to be doing a live Bad Voltage show on the 8th of March, which is a Friday, Friday the 8th of March, 2019. We we haven't got the exact show time yet confirmed. We're going to announce that later on, um, but it's probably going to be 7 or 8 o'clock, something like that, that night. Yeah. So um, be sure to get along, uh, get along to... to uh, to the show, if you go to SoCalLinuxExpo.org, is it? I think it's org. can't remember. Yes. Let me check. Uh, yep, yeah, .org. Uh, you can go and find out more about Scale, which is a fantastic conference. Uh, great speakers. Let me, uh, just in the interest of tantalizing you, there's, uh, oh, Erica Brescia. That's my wife. Uh, COO of Bitnami. Um, Adrian Cole. Gabriella Davila Ferrara from Google. Brendan Gregg, Randall Hunt. There's all kinds of good people speaking at, uh, yeah, at Scale. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Including and we're going to be... Probably all of us, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I got, I got, well, I got one accepted. Are you, uh, did you guys get yours accepted? I did. Excellent. Jeremy? I did not submit something this year. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Freaking slacker. This is your boss's conference. What's going on? <laughs> um, also, um, one of... <laughs> one of Want to say an enormous, enormous, enormous thank you to System76, who are sponsoring us. Yes. Um, System76, purveyor of fantastic uh, laptops and desktops and everything else. Um, and they've got their their new uh, their new hardware, which is, which is, is it out now, the Thelio? Yeah, the, oh, yeah, the wooden says, one. The Thelio officially landed. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. it's wicked. That doesn't yeah, seem really so, cool. And they, they have, yeah, and they've got uh, they've got this uh, their OS Pop OS, which 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 comes on on all of their hardware, really beautiful hardware. Um, so go and check them out at system seventy six dot com, and thanks again for them for uh, for supporting the show. And it's going to be um, as you might expect, a bad voltage live show is just a raucously good time. Uh, we're going to put on a real show for everyone this year, so. Be sure to check it out. If you want to go and uh, get a discount on your scale ticket, you can type the word Vault, V-O-L-T, into the registration box. And I think that yep. gives people a 50% discount. 50% so. discount code, I believe. Basically, yeah. they can't afford not to go at this point. I know. Yeah. It's sweet. And and what's awesome is scale is 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 a pretty cheap show to go to anyway, because it's run by a a community of volunteers. It's not like one of these super expensive two, three thousand dollars a ticket kind of thing. So you get a lot of bang for your buck anyway, but then you lop off half of that that cost. Uh and you get to see three idiots on a stage making fun of themselves. Yes. Um you do. that's us, by the way, not the speakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean just to be clear, a full pass starts at eighty five dollars, full price, so it's it, it is a very reasonably priced show. It's really not expensive yep. anyway for, you know, it goes on for uh, a few days and there's tons of stuff going on. There's like 12 tracks or something. 
Yeah, and it's cool because it's in Pasadena, so there's loads of great restaurants and stuff to do, and it's it's a really social event. If you've not been to Scale before, it's a really social event. It's a lot of fun. It's great content, but I, I, consistent. I mean, I, I've been going there for 15 years or however long. Jeremy's the same. Yeah. So it's a, it's 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 a staple. So go and check it out. Looking forward to doing the show. You'll be hearing more about it in forthcoming Bad Voltage episodes. But Jeremy, do you want to do your thing? Should we get this show on the road? We should. The first one of the year. We can't do without it, I guess, can we? And now, Bad Voltage. Regular listeners of Bad Voltage will know that we have an annual tradition. Um, and uh, that tradition is sucking at predictions. Um, <laughs> we, we... <laughs> it's turned into a fine, fine tradition, hasn't it? <laughs> it's, it's definitely been consistent. Um, so we always say each year, you know what, we're not going to suck at predictions next year. Well, we set some predictions at the beginning of 2018 and we thought it's time as we're into the new year, it's time for us to check in and see how we did. So, uh, who should we start out with chaps? Uh, who, 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 which person's predictions should, should we go first? Mr. Langridge, why don't we start with yours? Uh, I'm, I'm happy to... Um, I went. I, I went through and collected our predictions from last time, and did a little bit of assessment. And I believe I'm just going to fall on the sword at this point. <laughs> Since e- well, let's get that. Hang on. No, I want to enjoy each individual <laughs> moment of failure. I don't want us to just sum it up into one. Oh, no, it's one big conclusion. epic fail. It's it's a bunch of fails that lead up to the totality of the failure. Well, so uh, boohoo. Okay. So, Jeremy, why don't you read out each of his predictions, uh, and uh, I will comment. <laughs> I actually went back, uh, and I should do this more often, but and listen to the show from last year. Just uh, I know, Stuart, you wrote them down, but I was kind of curious about details and commentary. Yeah. It was, uh, it, it, the fail is strong in this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, your, your first prediction was at least two major firms, and, and you were quite serious about the major yeah. here. Will release AR glasses a la Google Glass. What do you think? You, how, how'd you score on this one? Uh, um, after each of the predictions in the in in our show notes, um, I've put a little note. You sort of yes or no as my my thoughts, and we'll discuss it here. But after this one, I've just put utter failure. I thought this would become a market segment, and it just totally hasn't at all. No. Well. Well, the Magic Leap, they came out, right? Those were explicitly excluded. Yes. They were? Yes. Yeah. Why? This is why I listened to the episode. (laughs) I'm glad you listened. I didn't listen to it. I don't listen to any of our old episodes. But why on earth did you deliberately exclude the the most likely one that was going to come out? Because the point of the prediction wasn't that some new thing will put us out. I was hoping, well, you're right about I, I, that. I don't, know, I, I, don't know, I don't know that I was hoping. I was predicting that this would become a a new market thing that people would compete in, like uh, home assistants or smartwatches or whatever. You know, rather than being right. here's one leading someone leading the charge to this, I was expecting it to become a thing that everyone would start doing, and that did not happen. <laughs> well, it, it became a thing that didn't happen, is what it became. That was yeah. genuine. Why do we think that is? Total. Uh, is that because is that because AR is hard, or because there's not enough of a market for it? I'm guessing it's probably a bit of both. I think the glasses themselves are hard and a lame user experience. Is the thing. Right. I made a couple of tangential, uh, not predictions, but comments, and some of those kind of came true. Like very specific use case ones did come out. There's a couple of uh, bicycle glasses that came out that do kind of real time GPS and yeah. do some of your vitals in the screen. Uh, but they're very hyper targeted, the ones that did come out. And there's one which I didn't realize in just doing reach, uh, and none of them work in Facebook spaces, by the way. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, Shut up. We, we, we will get to Facebook space. <laughs> yes. Hey, that there, was a there's... little bit of a necessary dig there, Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> that, that part of the segment went on for quite some time. Uh, there's one yeah. that I didn't realize that looks kind of interesting, but they're like four grand. The ODG ones are seven. But they, they all the ones that did come out seem to be pitching themselves more as smart glasses. Yeah. So... I would agree with your assessment of utter failure. Here. I mean, to me, it seems like 
and maybe I'm just picking picking this up from too many sci-fi books or whatever, but it seems like an obvious output method, right? Putting things directly in my eyes rather than carrying around a little slab of black glass in my pocket that I have to manually take out and look at. Um, but we're just, I don't know whether we're just not there yet with the technology or whether people just think it's stupid and Google Class has pissed so comprehensively in the waterhole that we've got to wait a generation before anyone will do it again or what. I think there's a little <laughs> bit of, of product people probably bitten by how it was treated with Google, the reaction from Google Glass. And I think part of it is there's kind of a nexus of usefulness and battery life, and I don't think we've crossed a that, certain line. That's, that's the thing. I, I don't think you can make something which is all of attractive looking actually useful decent battery life and i think those three things are table stakes yes so yeah, yeah until yeah. that until we reach a point where that's possible I, I suspect this won't happen but it seems inevitable eventually yeah for the same reason that smartwatches they find they uh, arguably hit a point where they are actually useful and pretty all at once and you get semi decent battery life and so on and then they became a segment and i kind of thought this would be the same thing, and it just totally hasn't happened. I think, given that there was some excitement about it last year, well, the year before last, huh, 2017, and it hasn't come to fruition at all in 2018, I'm assuming the whole thing's dead for a few years now. Yeah, I would agree with that. So, so moving on. Utter failure. <laughs> One of the major tech firms will buy entirely a healthcare provider and as a as a little bit of an aside here, there was quite a, a long definition of what a healthcare provider was. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yep. Um, we define it as a hospital or an insurance company was the the final. Yes, but again, um, and I didn't go digging around for examples of this because again, the prediction wasn't really can I, you know, narrowly justify the truth of the prediction. The point was I was expecting large tech firms to push further into healthcare by buying people already in the field. Right. And so, so John and I's opinion was that this would happen in the opposite way that you thought. You thought it was going to be a mass play on data, I think, because maybe yeah. you didn't fully understand the HIPAA laws and stuff like that. Yeah. If you look at Amazon, they bought PillPack. There was a bunch of push at Oracle, bought a couple of companies. There was a push for technology companies getting into healthcare, but it was the way John and I suspected it would happen. Yes. And there was and no major insurance company purchase or anything. Yep, you were right, and I was, I was wrong about that. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, uh, after the discussion last time, I, th I think I went into it slightly misunderstanding how – the US healthcare system works. Not that anyone really understands it, I don't think. Uh, no. But yeah, so no, we do understand it. It just doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so I, that sounds like a prediction for the year of Linux on the desktop. <laughs> Still not able to buy a kidney by Amazon Prime either, so it's just not happening. Well, you know what? I tell you what, Linux on the desktop, a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll move on to the next not. one. Oh, yes, do you have. No, oh, no, God, no, I was just going to be more, more sarcasm. Carry on. So this one I think is interesting. It was Microsoft releases their own Linux distro. I said, and I quote, I'd be shocked if this doesn't happen. And Jado's response was just definitely going to happen. Yep. Turns out, no. Now, now <laughs> I, I admit I predicted this and I got it wrong. But you two both fully jumped into that pool alongside me and it didn't happen. Oh, we were unequivocal in our support for this. Jono even made a comment about you packing it in and it being too easy of a prediction. <laughs> I, I uh, don't recall this conversation. Um, there, there is a, les a lesson here, fellow Nostradamus, right? <laughs> Not as easy as it looks, this future stuff. <laughs> I'm, I am a, a bit surprised that this is not the case. Um, they, they, they did release some kind of Linux image, though, didn't they? So Sphere is Linux-based, and they have, like, their software-defined networking stuff is Linux-based, but they don't... Right. We all thought they would release a version of Linux that ran in Azure natively that was yes. Microsoft Linux, we, we which were, they didn't. They didn't do that with, specific thing. We, right. we were expecting an Azure version of Alpine, basically, and it didn't right. happen. Yes. So I, if we learn one thing here, if it's all three of us are vociferous and thinking something will happen, it's almost certainly not going to happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. This and now is, uh... the PS de resistance, Twitter bans Trump. Oh. <laughs> now, I don't remember what I said about this, but I think I said there is no fucking chance that's going to happen. Almost um, verbatim. Yeah. That's, what <laughs> that's, that's literally what you said. Um, I, I, I confess that this one was more, you know, 
hopeful rather than yeah wolfy <laughs> well you know the people's flag is deepest red however didn't happen again so no <laughs> points for me at all i didn't get anything right which is tragic so yeah. i i feel like one of you two who did better than me i will confess but also not a lot better. <laughs> so so let's, let's just review. Uh, there was four predictions, and oh, how many did you get right? Shut up. Right. <laughs> so cu- currently our scores are uh-uh. not, not for me. Um, each of you two have got minus one because you both bought one of my predictions and it didn't no, happen. No, <laughs> that's not. All right, Bernie Madoff, that's not how it works, okay? <laughs> so, no. Okay. No, we're still very much at zero and probably going to stay there. Um <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's so, have um, let's have John O next. I think. Uh, <laughs> I need really? I need I need someone else last. to I need someone else to suffer the misery and pain. <laughs> okay. All right. What's what what was my first one? So uh, your so your first one. Facebook will bring Facebook VR, Facebook Spaces out of beta and launch it for real, and it will be a failure. Now that is a that is a, if you think about it, it's a prediction that's kind of broken into two pieces. One is bringing out of VR, <laughs> uh, bringing out of beta, and one is it being a failure. I would argue that now. I admit it's not really come out of beta. From what I understand, there's an office at Facebook HQ with a moldy cup of coffee in it, and no one working on Facebook uh, Spaces. I, it just doesn't seem. To, nothing I, seems to be happening. I am. I am happy to give you. A single point for this. If you're angling for getting two points because it's two predictions, no, give up on that hope. But can I get can I get one point? But you do get a point for this because, as far as I can tell, it basically happened and no one really cared, and that's exactly what you said would happen. I mean, yes, fine, technically it's not out of beta, but I don't think Gmail's technically out of beta, is it? Right. Well, that's kind of my point: is that <laughs> Facebook VR was going to be a production piece of software that you can use on VR headsets, and it's going to be a failure. Now, it is available for the Rift, it's available for the Vive, and there's just nothing happening about it, No one, understand. No one cares at all. I've not heard word one about it. I mean, it happened, fine. You get the point. And literally no one has gone for it whatsoever. It's Eck and I were pretty merciless in our in our abuse of Facebook Spaces, and I I'll be honest with you, I forgot about it like the day after that segment aired, <laughs> and promptly <laughs> forgot about it until yesterday when I listened to the show. So, <laughs> I, well, uh, I I went and looked it up, and I was faintly surprised to find out that it had come out because. I hadn't heard about it. And fine, the whole world of technology is just terrible, and I don't care about any of it. But normally I hear about these things. And I don't remember hearing about... I think they must have announced it, you know, but no one cares. I mean, Facebook have had the worst year imaginable. Um, but Not being a good year for Facebook. Um, but yeah, Facebook. So yes, po- point for Jono. Facebook Spaces. Excellent. They even did a press release in February. Facebook opens up social VR app spaces to Facebook groups. Wow. Yeah. yeah, we predicted at um, we predicted at the time that I would claim that this was such a woolly prediction that it shouldn't count. But no, you get the point. There you go. Excellent. One point Dale. for Jono. <laughs> Dale, I, I I like how this is beginning. Well, <laughs> what's next? Well, it starts well. <laughs> uh, Red Hat will post their first one billion dollar revenue quarter. We're gonna have a fight about this. We're not gonna have a fight about it because it didn't happen. <laughs> well, so they got to about eight hundred and fifty, something like that. Agreed, which is not a billion dollars. It right. also was in ha- line with what they estimated. Yeah, I mean, they, However, they, they estimated was, something the, massive happens with Red Hat, and we don't know what that thing is. I would be prepared to give you one point. <laughs> However, <laughs> but but we always talk about this. There is <clears throat> there is the prediction, and then there is the spirit of the prediction. Now, the spirit of this prediction. No two, way! Are you claiming right, the sh- IBM thing? <laughs> Not sh- a sh- chance! No, 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 no. No, no, no. Shut your trap. There's, 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 I have, all right. The defense has two arguments here. Okay. Um, argument number one is that the spirit of this prediction is that Red Hat would be, uh, continuing to build consistent 
profitability in their company. And I would argue that that's very much the case. Now, the number no, was a little bit out. No, that's no, 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 no. Because having listened to the show, like Jeremy has, your point wasn't they would continue to build. That 800 million figure, which is what people predicted, was a built-up figure. It wasn't just flatlining from 2017. Your prediction was specifically that they would outperform even their already sloping up graph. Um, and that was the that the spirit of the prediction was very much we're expecting them to go up, but they're going to go up beyond that, significantly beyond that, and that's why they're going to hit a billion dollar quarter. And they didn't do it. They hit see, I, they you, hit basically eight hundred million nah, at every quarter, nah. just like they said. Nah, you see, okay. So on this first part of the defense, first of all, you're wrong. And the reason why you know I know you're wrong is this: is I don't do an awful lot of preparation for bad voltage. Um, <laughs> So around the time really? that we were going to do the predictions, I th- I'd read an article by Stephen Vaughn Nichols on ZDNet entitled Red Hat on its way to becoming the first billion dollar a quarter open source company. And I thought that sounds like a great prediction, right? So all of this 800 was what people were thinking. Maybe, not me. I read Stephen's article. That's where I got the billion from. That's, well, the, that's the genesis of it. Secondly... <laughs> Secondly, they've been acquired by IBM. So surely all that money is going to come in. I mean, it's deferred a little bit, but they got acquired. So, I think they get at least half a point. <laughs> because so, it's not just a billion. They're going to get, what, So th- billion? There are two things here. Billion? First of all, I have been abundantly <laughs> clear that you're not claiming the IBM thing as support for this protection. Get stuffed. Why not? Secondly, if you're not careful, I'm taking a point off you because it wasn't even your prediction. It was bloody SJVN's prediction, you thieving <laughs> bastard. So... <laughs> It, I will it was... I'll award one half point to Steven, which now puts him ahead of you, Eck. Hang on, but he's, he's wrong. <laughs> no. I can't no, believe I'm be behind someone the... who's not even on the show. This is terrible. <laughs> you should be taking the point away from him, the bearded journalistic <laughs> bastard. Okay, not from me. He's the result that this is failing. Right, I've never liked him. <laughs> Actually, that's untrue. We all love Stephen. But no, the point is, is that 34 billion, whatever it was, is a demonstration of Red Hat's profitability and revenue and the whole deal. Like, I have to get at least some some semblance of a point on this, at well, least half I, a point. I, okay, now, I'm, I'm happy to defer to Jeremy You've got to on admit this. that the spirit of this is I'm, correct. I'm, no, well, the spirit I, was about them hitting a higher revenue level than they thought. They actually missed revenue slightly in the last yes, quarter they before did. the acquisition. So yeah, but they, had they didn't like even si- outperform their expectation. They underperformed. So no, but I, didn't they no have up point. until that one quarter like sixty-four quarters of straight growth? Oh, no, they, st- still they, still, they still grew. They still grew. Quarter. They just didn't grow as fast as their uh, guidance said they would. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. And so you, they didn't and you quite- predicted they would outperform their predicted growth, and they underperformed their predicted growth. Well, I don't know. I the mean, defense G- has made it very clear that I've depended <laughs> on my I've depended my uh, testimony on. Inaccurate scientific reporting from Steve <laughs> Von Nichols. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, Jeremy, you know um, more about this sort of thing than I do, so I'm happy to defer to you on this particular point. If IBM buys your company, does that money count as revenue? <laughs> No. Right, I, then shut I up, I don't John. think this one hit in, in spirit, even. <laughs> all right, okay. Well, no, right, well, no point for Unless that. the spirit of the get, the prediction was, I would like one point. <laughs> so late, later now, this year, when we do Bad Voltage Live, I just want you both to know that there's going to be a very unpleasant surprise in both of your hotel rooms uh, <laughs> waiting for you when you get there. Now, this isn't good because Ak and I are rooming, so it's <laughs> going to be my room as well. That's, that's, that's not going to end well for you. On the other hand, um, maybe this year we'll try not to make you answer a load of questions in languages you don't even speak. So yeah, that would be nice. You know, that would be nice. Um, All right, Jono's third next? prediction: Google will kick off a formal early access developer platform for people building Flutter apps for future, with API docs encouraging people to start writing apps for it. Google will make a significant shift in quotes towards future and encouraging people to build for it, although they won't release an actual device yet. Now, before you go on to pathetically attempt to justify why this is true even though it isn't i'm prepared to bet money you haven't thought the word flutter since that prediction episode 
Uh, that's, but that, that is not the point. <laughs> it's partially the point, but it's not entirely the point. Um, uh, now, I would argue that I've got this right. <laughs> I know this, this is surprising. Right. Okay, this is going to be and, good. I, I, I'm prepared to settle in and listen to this just for sheer entertainment value. Why is this incredibly wrong thing <laughs> actually correct, Jono? Because the Android open source project, uh, there was a reference to the SDK. Where did I read this? Let me dig it up, okay? I did. Uh, uh, Let again. me see who made this prediction for me. <laughs> uh, no. So, Android Open Source Project now includes the Fuchsia SDK and a Fuchsia device. Yes, it does. However, okay, you were very clear that this was an actual formal developer platform, right? They're deliberately going out and encourage people to build Flutter apps for Fuchsia. Happening to okay. drop a couple of future APIs into the existing Android thing is not that. Not even close. So, uh, uh, even not only you that, I think the think. opposite happened because in December they made Fuchsia run Android apps. So yeah. if anything, they went in the opposite direction. Yeah. Even you don't think you've got this point, man. Just give up. <laughs> Hang on. What's this? Google releases Flutter app development SDK version 1.0, no longer in beta. Yeah. December the 4th, 2018. Yeah. There it is. That's Isn't that a, what I predicted? That, no, that's an SDK. <laughs> what did I say again? <laughs> <laughs> right. This is my point. You didn't, you didn't get this. Again, this is the spirit of the thing. What I believe you were pushing for and arguing for in the show last year was that there'd be an official Google push to people saying, hey, start building Fuchsia apps because Fuchsia's coming. Yeah. And that totally hasn't happened. They released, they released a, well, Flutter <laughs> SDK. <laughs> That's pretty close to related to no. Fuchsia, isn't it? <laughs> You're Hang not... on. In the prediction here, it says, it says Google will Google yeah. will kick off a formal early access developer platform for people building Flutter apps for Fuchsia. Yes. They released a Flutter SDK this yeah. year. Yes, they did. That's a developer where's the, platform. Where, where's... Really? That's, 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 that's your, that is your official statement as the world's best community consultant that if you want a developer platform, just put out an SDK. That's it, is it? That's the advice I mean, you give to people. It's not a very good developer platform, I admit, <laughs> but it's, it is. It is. You got to admit, if you're gonna the, the first right, let's let's right. Hang on, hang on. I got this. Okay. So here's the thing: if you're gonna build a developer platform, right, then you can basically break that into two areas, right? You've got the ability for for people to build to build applications. You need an SDK for that. And then you may or may not have the ability for people to distribute applications, right? So you have things like the app stores and whatever else. But for many years, for example, in open source, you could build applications for GNOME, but there was no, there was no standard place in which you would get GNOME applications. You'd have to depend on your distros to get them, okay? But the point is, is that what makes GNOME a platform, the ability for people to build GNOME apps, is the availability of a set of APIs uh, accessible via some, preferably accessible via some form of SDK. You don't even necessarily need an SDK. You need a, a set of publicly exposable APIs that people can write software to. Now they released, they released <laughs> the Flutter SDK, right? And and that's the, it. The future SDK. No, hang on. The future SDK is in the open source project. <laughs> that's you know as well as I do. That's not a developer platform. That's like walking into Starbucks and saying, "I want a chai latte," and they give you some spices and a cow, and go, "There you go. Hang you on. need both All of right. these things." Let, let, let me let me get this right. So what you're telling me, and I just want to preface this with. Uh, over 20 years of being an active participant in the open source community, specifically the Linux desktop open source community, you're telling me that uh, a developer platform with shitty documentation that's difficult to use is unacceptable? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're telling me? I'll tell you it's not a developer platform. Do you know what one of the most popular blog posts on, on my blog is? My blog? A tutorial I wrote about GStreamer. That's how poor the documentation for GStreamer <laughs> is. Okay. Yeah, but I, the thing, maybe I'm misunderstanding though. Your p 
point of the, the, the spirit of it was that Fuchsia would make, quote-unquote, or Google would make, quote-unquote, a significant shift towards Fuchsia. Flutter is an SDK that targets Android. To tar- they want you to write iOS apps in Flutter. So the Flutter SDK is not really tethered to Fuchsia. I admit Fuchsia that that's apps the way, natively that's will the way be. you part the argument. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> so <laughs> if they did release an SDK, and that SDK can target Fuchsia someday, but today targets Android and iOS. Right. But my prediction was, was Flutter apps for Fuchsia, right? The SDK is available for Flutter, and I admit that it's a little hard to find, but you can write Fuchsia apps using the Android Open Source Project. You, I believe I write. deserve half a point for this. <laughs> I believe I deserve at least half a point for this, because I agree that it's not the big, snazzy, formal, you know, like Android SDK kind of thing, but I think that the spirit of the prediction is there. I, I, I don't I, think Google's si- <laughs> significantly moved towards Fuchsia. No, I don't. I don't. I don't call that a significant shift towards Fuchsia. I don't call that a formal early access developer platform either. <laughs> All so, right, then. So I think Moving no on. point for that. Fine. And, okay. And, well, and, I, I'm sure our listeners would like us to debate this for another I, 25 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so I'm curious what the listeners think. If you think he should get a point. Feel free to go to community. No, don't ask, them, don't ask them, Jeremy. Don't ask them, please. <laughs> well, I but... <laughs> also look forward to another argument for point number four because I think we're going to disagree on this one. The outcome here. This one. I'm, I'm not going to deny. I have a very weak platform <laughs> on this one. <laughs> this, this one is genuinely going to be an argument. Jono's fourth and final prediction: Sony will announce the PlayStation Five. They won't ship it, but announce it. A web page, there'll be a web page on, on a Sony site saying the PS5 will definitely happen and a release date. As far as I can tell, that hasn't happened. There's a bunch of speculation about there this. Is, though. But there always right. is. If PS4 sales are actually up, so now they're saying PlayStation 5 might not be until 2021. Yeah, 22. I really don't think but because again, I think the point you were aiming towards was not everyone's going to be going. Wonder whether there's going to be a PS5. They'll have said it's well, no, definitely he, happening. The, the prediction was on the Sony site, not a third party site. Yeah. There will be an announcement with a date, and that, as far as I can tell, that hasn't happened. There does seem to be more than just I wonder if there'll be a PS5. There, there does seem to be stuff from inside Sony about this but none of it's very official or very so concrete that, in timing <clears throat> so the only thing that i've seen on this <laughs> and so there, there there are two very weak elements of my i don't know how good your german is <laughs> actually i know how good your german is Zach. i was gonna say uh, you do know. <laughs> um so there's a guy called sean Layden. Um, who is an exec at PlayStation, and he did an interview with the German website Golem. Now he didn't give a very specific date, but he did. He did. He did confirm that um, Sony are going to release a PS5. So that's the first piece. Um, and he said it will probably be some time before the PS5 is released. So I agree with you that there isn't the page on the website. Sony did, in a way confirm that they're working on a ps5 but there's no date for it and to um, be honest the other with argument you, i have is that they published a, they published an image on instagram with the word playstation and neon lights and the s kind of looked like a five and everybody was thinking that like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate that's a little bit info warsy uh, <laughs> this is like all these people who see gabe newell eating three burgers and go half-life three confirmed shut up <laughs> <laughs> no point for that <laughs> Do um, I at least get half a point for the fact that an executive at PlayStation did confirm that they're going to release a PS5? I mean, but that's do I get not a, quarter a, of a point that's not that? a surprise, right? It's not no. like anyone that's was thinking. That's not a surprise. I mean, they, no, they may have they may have not done that. You don't know. I mean, Sega got out of the business. Nintendo are rumored to be getting out of the home video console biz, console business. It's not a given that they're going to release a PS5. Sega got out of the business because they were losing. <laughs> Well, there's a number of reasons why they got out of the business, primarily because they were losing. <laughs> um, if you'd have predicted the Sonic same, games you need. If you'd have predicted the Sega Dreamcast 2, 
then the very fact that someone vaguely to do with Sega said, yeah, we're doing that, I'd count that as a, a, as a pass, right? I'd give you the point for that. Even, so I, going- even I would not predict the Sega Dreamcast 2. <laughs> That's just outstandingly untrue. Um, I personally wouldn't give you the point for this, but I'm prepared to have, if Jeremy's prepared to weaken and give you a quarter of a point or something, I'll buy it. I, throw me some kibble, Jeremy. Throw me I some mean, kibble. I just, you're... Uh, wind condition was pretty explicit and it didn't happen. Uh, God damn. There you go, right, you Garcia see? For the, I tell you what, Garcia for the Supreme Court. There's no <laughs> screwing around with him, is there? So, Jono, how did Jeremy do? Well, hang on. Let's do the point tally. Oh, okay. Let's not forget that I got a point. <laughs> <laughs> out of okay. all things, out of VR spaces to which... I know. But it's bear just... in mind that that was two predictions of VR, uh, Facebook VR, in a row. <laughs> just two years of predictions. So one out of two ain't bad. This is a, um, this st- a stop clock's right twice a day, I suppose. So, yes. Well, no, I, so I got one point, and then it, I think there's, there's two ceremonial half points included in that. But uh, <laughs> the, the, it turns out that my currency is not recognized by your... Your your uh, your dictatorial state that we're living in. That's because right. so, we're, we're still on fiat currency, right? One point for John Ho. I'm on Renault currency, but I'm <laughs> Tish. <laughs> all right. So, oh. all right. So our our tiny friend in the corner, Jeremy. Your prediction, your first prediction was Tesla will deliver a hundred thousand Model Threes in two thousand and eighteen. Now, remember, they were making a little under 500 a month when I predicted that. Yep. Their own prediction said they wouldn't hit it, and Act basically called me a dummy for even thinking this was going to happen. That did uh, happen. Meanwhile, <laughs> it looks like they shipped about 145,000 yeah. Model 3s. Um, you did it, man. Yeah. You did it, undoubtedly. I unambiguously got the point. I found it pretty hard to find actual sales figures, but however you add them up, it's over 100,000 as far as I can tell. Have you just been running around with a clipboard? <laughs> yes, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why you look tired. I, I, will, um, I was surprised here because the, the, the two days before we recorded, but after I wrote the prediction down, they said they were having problems. <laughs> so I was, I was not confident in this one, but I'm glad right. they did it. It's, a, it's an awesome car. Yeah, but I'm assuming no. LinuxQuestions.org okay. made a uh, contribution to the yeah. Tesla executive yeah. team. Okay. <laughs> if money Net- is flowing from one of those orgs to the other, it's not going to be in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> 100,000 foam Linux questions penguins will be arriving at Tesla HQ. So thank you for your generosity. All right. Should we move on to the second one then? Because that was yes. easy. Yep. An IoT or cloud-related security incident will directly result in either significant human bodily harm or much worse. So Your as far predictions as I can tell, were this... a bit hand wavy this I... time round, by the way, Garcia. So this is uh, the, the first the last of the one two. Was. Um, yeah. I, from what I could tell, this actually didn't. I'm very happy it didn't happen, but I, I am very surprised that I, I, I didn't see anything I could even re- remotely. I could probably make a some kind of Jono argument here about <laughs> something weird happened, and then. But you mean you mean there, an argument filled with accuracy and yeah, scientific yes, exactly. rigor? As there was one where a, a, an oven overheat, like an industrial oven overheated, but it doesn't appear to have hurt anyone. Just melted down, basically. Uh, but there was not a, to the order that I thought this would happen. It, it just absolutely no. did not happen. As, f- as far as I could tell, I did have a look and didn't find anything. But I was half prepared for you to come to come here with a list of things that I just hadn't come across. But no, I no, don't. no. I, I looked, I looked as well, and I just could not find anything. A sp- a spirit of the thing, you were expecting to see, you know, some kind of big high profile gets lots of news. Yeah, press. right. The spirit of this would have been that we all had heard about it without having to look it up because it was major, yeah. major yeah. international news. This is so- something uh, like the self driving car thing or whatever. And as far as I can tell, that hasn't happened. I was actually thinking something even potentially much worse. Like uh, you know, Karen Sandler from Conservancy, she talks about free software running pacemakers. She's got yes, a pacemaker, right. right? Yes. So that's the kind of thing I would have imagined would be like the serious bodily yes. harm type thing. But thankfully that didn't happen. Thankfully nope. so, uh, yeah. Never so uh, happy to be incorrect actually. Yeah, they, they, this is yeah. I am I am glad you got this one wrong, I have to say. Yes. Um I yep. think if you were to put it in for the next year, I still wouldn't bet against it, but fortunately yep. so far 2018 has not seen that. 
Next. Yes. Uh, the next one, Bitcoin will end 2018 under $2,000. And so this was a this was a little bit of a contrarian prediction. Don't forget for the the day we recorded the last the show where we made these predictions, uh, Bitcoin was at sixteen grand and trending massively up. Yeah. So to to fall to two was a little bit of a, a bold prediction. Uh, it's hovering around for those that who don't follow Bitcoin. It's hovering around four K right now. It hit a low in twenty eighteen of about three point two. Yeah. Thirty two hundred bucks ish. So not too far off compared to where it was I- when we started the year. But uh, did did not hit. I I I think yeah. I mean, you you had the balls to actually predict a very low number, and it didn't quite come off. But yeah, you were directionally correct, certainly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was basically uh, predicting it would be worth ten percent of its value at the time, which <laughs> maybe a little bit of an overshot, but. <laughs> yeah, but to be fair as well, around finally, that time everybody was concerned. Oh, about, everybody was concerned about. Uh, well, around that time, everybody was concerned about bit like about the the bubble bursting with Bitcoin, weren't they? So, and I, I check think, it out. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, last one. Now, before we go on to this one, I want to make it. I want to just revisit the scores. Language <laughs> zero. I have one point. And two ceremonial half points. <laughs> Jeremy has one point and no ceremonial half points. Now let's get on to Jeremy's final, not particularly rigorous prediction. <laughs> AI, which some of you may have heard of, will not radically transform the enterprise in 2018. I, I mean, I, I didn't listen to the when we did this. I'm amazed that we let this in, language. This is... <laughs> I don't like it that will... you're getting to set the stage here. It seems unfair. <laughs> Deeply unfair. It will not radically transform the enterprise in any way in 2018. So, so the, the broader point was, in really the spirit of the... Of it, although we should go back to the whole unambiguous win condition thing, um, was that there was a ton of hype around AI, and there was this feeling in the industry, a lot of the coverage was that it was going to be a revolutionary year for AI, and I said that it wasn't, and I don't think that it was in any way, shape, or form. I, so. I, I have to say, even given the fact that, you know, you're supposed to have unambiguous wind conditions or everything, and everything, the purpose of that is so we don't end up arguing about whether it happened or not. And this, We're always going to yeah. argue whether it happened or not. <laughs> right. But first, f- f- first of all, we have proved that We'll argue about anything on the grounds that Jono gave a hard number for a Red Hat revenue quarter. They didn't make it and still spent 10 years trying, 10 minutes trying to justify why it happened. And yeah, secondly, they, they, they this one, recru- yeah. AI will not radically transform the enterprise in any way in 2018 is stone cold bang on correct, <laughs> right? Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because if the spirit of if the spirit of, of this is that the is that the steam is running out of the AI train, uh, according to Bloomberg, that, VCs put nine point three billion dollars into AI that in two thousand and eighteen. That wasn't the thing. The, the point wasn't hang on, hang that on, the steam's hang on, running hang on, out. Hang on, let, what, what what was the point? Um, was that despite the fact that people funneled nine billion dollars into it, it won't make any fucking difference to the enterprise, and that's exactly the case. No, but the, the, here's the thing, right? I know that there's like with VCs, yes. Uh, a lot of VCs will expect some of their startups to fail, right? That's just the nature of the business that they're in, right? Yep. But again, according to this article on Bloomberg, AI companies raised 72% more in 2018 than previous years, and deal volume fell because VCs are giving more money to individual startups. Now, I would say that, <clears throat> look, these a- I, 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 I haven't looked at every single investment in a, in a company, but of, I, I suspect that the majority of this is harnessing AI in the enterprise. We've seen Google invest significantly in AI in the enterprise and ML. We've seen every mm-hmm. company working in this area. Like, to me, there's no doubt that AI is, is continued. And in fact, it's like the fact that we've seen this record amount of investment from, from VCs, I think is is contrary to the prediction, the fact that it's it's kind of not going to make much of a difference. I totally disagree with you. If those companies that have been invested in then turn around and do something useful with that money and people start buying all their products and then that transforms the enterprise, I'll totally buy it. But you can't have a win condition at that point because you, basically you're saying 
the defi- the, the, this prediction can only be true if we go and survey every single company and it's found that nothing has been beneficial. In t- we, there's no way we can do that. There's no way we can assess that. But I mean, I, I don't. The VC stick seems weird. Like, you could make a prediction every year for as long as VCs exist, saying VCs will make a lot of bad bets, a couple of good bets. Those good get, bets will be profitable enough to b- offset the bad bets. Right. That's but how you the guys, model works. So I, they, I they dumped agree, a bunch but... of money into a, a space. Sure. As far- I'm not saying that this. Is, I'm not saying that this is the only metric. But you guys have got to be honest. They're like, I mean, we joke all of the time about how companies will not stop talking about AIML, like. AI, ML, and freaking blockchain is all anybody talks about right now, okay? Yeah. Oh, new open source licenses for cloud software. But, like, that's all anybody's talking yes. about right now. Uh, so this, w- there's no way of judging this prediction because we can't go and assess every company. What I'm saying is the market is clearly investing and I think seeing value from AI. I, uh, but that, that last thing there is exactly the point. You seem to be taking, people are putting money into this as a good proxy for value is coming out of it. And I'm not at all sure those two things are connected. But, but my point is, is that we can't assess whether value is being pulled out of it. That's the point of the prediction. So the prediction is therefore invalid. I've, we can't assess I think, it. We can assess the value being so, put so into it. So you're saying we should go back and not allow it as a prediction. Not that it was met or not met. You don't like it as a prediction. But, I No, I love it as a prediction because we're having a fight about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- uh, I think I just, Jez's point at the time was that it would continue to be a bunch of hand-wavy hype and nothing actually concretely useful would come out of it and largely i would say that's still the case oh, it's not the case so, uh, in measurable s- data are you saying that because we've heard no examples that's of not it measurable data on what yeah, it measur- is. look my red hat prediction was based on red hat, uh, on measurable data your Donald Trump prediction was based on measurable data. How is this? How is your viewpoint on this? I like that you Judge had Lambert. a prediction about Red Hat's numbers. They didn't hit that number. You're still trying to get points. <laughs> I had a prediction that Bitcoin would get cut into a tenth of its value. It, instead of going down to 10%, it's at like 14%. <laughs> Right. And I gave that up one up right away. Uh, but you got, I mean, you're, you're, what yeah. you're describing there, Jeremy, is dignity, which we haven't yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've read about that on the internet. <laughs> but, but, look, my point is, is that is that I agree with like if if we're basing everything, if if we're <laughs> approaching all of these predictions based upon the cold hard facts, right? My red hat fact was wrong, right? I agree. <laughs> My PlayStation fan. Ha- ha- however, in Jono's new post-truth environment, <laughs> you're not having a point <laughs> for it. I'm not. No, I know, and I didn't get a point for it, right? But you, this, you, there is no way in which you can judge this prediction. The reason I that's say, like me uh, say, no, yeah. no, no. Take the um, on, our IoT or cloud-related security incident, right? Which didn't happen, but. You might find it did happen, but what we said there was we didn't hear about anything, and the spirit of the prediction is pretty much that in order to be a big enough thing to qualify for the prediction, we would have heard about it. We'd expect to have heard about it. This, to me, feels like the same thing. I can certainly point to lots of AI examples of things inside software companies which are doing a good job. But that, to me, is not the enterprise. They're people who want to sell things to the enterprise. And as far as I can tell, the enterprise ain't buying. Not yet. But, the th- but look, this is, this, is, but this is the thing, right? If we're talking about the spirit of it, the spirit of this prediction was that AI basically isn't offering any value to the enterprise. And what I'm saying is, we've got Bloomberg saying 9.8 billion put into AI, right? Invested into it. 72% of companies... Raising more than the previous year, deal volume dropping. Gartner said that AI is going to be worth one point two trillion dollars to the enterprise in two thousand and eighteen. I would argue that all of these numbers fly in the face of the argument that AI isn't really going anywhere or really like offering any value. Ferociously googling numbers as the show is happening. <laughs> no, Jeremy, I did all of this research beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> the typing that you can hear is it's uh, it's just completely in the unrelated. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I look, you know what? I'm I'm going to plant my flag in the ground on this one. I don't think I don't think this is a winner. I think at best this is uh, what's that term in tennis when you basically draw? 
Is it douche or whatever it's called? I don't know. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What? Yeah. Being Better at 40, than draw being Bigelow. At, being at 40 <laughs> all is not a draw. <laughs> Ah, sorry, I made a sports reference in Bad Voltage. That was a poor choice. <laughs> Hopefully Jeremy won't make a Bills reference. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do we want to do? I know what we should do. We should open this up to the Bad Voltage community, see what they think. Yeah, no, that's fair. Well, okay, I mean, I will count I myself think we can... out. <clears throat> All right, so Jeremy are basically and I are basically drawn at the point of this moment, but we'll allow the Bad Voltage community... I tell you what, we'll put a poll on the forum, right? We'll stick a poll on the forum. Good idea, do that, yes. Ba- bad Voltage people, you go and vote, and then we will um, announce the results in the next show, and that will crown the winner <laughs> of the prediction. And we won't at all argue about Ooh. the results. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. I look forward to someone putting SJVN down and him winning the right-in vote, and we both lose. <laughs> we should put that as a third option. Hey, that would be great. Uh, Let's do that. going to be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, all right. So there we have it. Um, I think overall, uh, we how many predictions did we did we make in total? It was four, Twelve. Five, eight. Twelve. Twelve. And we got two, right? <laughs> <laughs> and a third, maybe. <laughs> That's that's a, again, that, that, that's a approximately <laughs> le- less than twenty five percent hit rate, which is actually not bad when you compare it to previous years. So we're improving slowly. <laughs> we had that one stellar year, and other than that, it's been <laughs> yeah, not great. We've been nowhere. It's not. I, I, it's not seriously, yeah. I, I honestly think somewhere there is a show called Good Voltage who just does the opposite of what we do, and they got almost all their <laughs> predictions right. <laughs> Um, and in the next show, we're going to um, come up with our 2019 predictions. And I'm honestly struggling what I'm going to come up with for Facebook Spaces for this next year. Uh, so, yeah. So we'll see what happens. So, yeah. But go to the forum, uh, community.badvoltage.org. Go and vote on the um, on the on on the the controversial final question, a prediction, and we'll go from there. There we have it. The show. Um, I'm a little annoyed that I had to do all of that editing for one segment, by the way. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> yeah, why? Do... It's not cool. Uh, I think you should both go away and think about what you've done. And I think it's, I think it's just because you're spiteful about the fact that I was so right in my predictions. <laughs> That's exactly the reason. I, I, I'm a little upset that we're that transparent about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, going to be honest with you, fellas. I'm a little nervous for the predictions for this year because we haven't done well. And we do no. need to book the trend. We're supposed to be a serious journalistic uh, technology show that has a pulse on the market, on technology, and where things are moving forward. And we have not demonstrated any of those things. So. We've quite potentially have not demonstrated those things. I, uh, yeah. I am tempted to just predict... The technological world will be terrible and nothing in it will be basically of any interest. And I would have been right if I'd have predicted it for 2018. So I see no reason why I wouldn't be right for 2019. Buzzkill. All right, (laughs) Captain Emo. Man. Well, well, no, okay. I mean, being serious, look back over the last year. What has happened in the technology world where you thought, wow, that was genuinely a really cool thing? Uh, Loads of things. Yeah. Like, uh, I love the Peloton. I think it's awesome. Uh, no, okay, do you no, still um, use it. You did say the Peloton. I will give you. I'll yeah, give you the Peloton. It, using it all the time. Um, I think just broadly, what's being like all the technology I use for my business, I I love. Like, I'm using more and more different types of thing, like different tools. That's that's been pretty cool. Um, I just, it's easier than ever to run a business is basically what I'm saying. I, I, will, um, I, 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 think... I will happily give you the Peloton. Yes. I hadn't thought it's not my sort of thing, but you like it and it I... does seem really cool and everything like that. Getting excited about a new way of doing CRM. Not that excited, to be honest. No, I, think I mean, it, I think it is. A, I, I think mean, it was I... definitely a very iterative year, but I think those are not necessarily bad years. <laughs> yeah. And I think I think I, I think the digital wellness stuff is 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 great that we're seeing more and more of that. I think um, it's good to see what's happening. Android is getting better and better and better. I think the Pixel Three I'm pretty happy with. Um, 
you know, I think technology is great. I think more and more people are getting access to the internet in developing nations. I think the, the year has become much better for equality and inclusion in technology. This was a good year. Stop being a miserable fucking bastard. <laughs> yeah, just, there was a lot of misery in that. <laughs> I know. You need to cheer up, pal. What's going on with you? <laughs> well, okay. You so need to I pull have, yourself I... together, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I have made a note. Better CRM All systems. Right. No, I mean, don't, 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 those, <laughs> th- those, th- those, those things you say are actually reasonable. I'll give you those. Yep. Okay. So that's cool. So, so listen out to the <laughs> next show. For our actual predictions of what will happen in 2019. Yes. And go along to community.badvoltage.org and vote on John O's post about who won. The forbidden question. Yeah. This is important the, now, Mr. Bacon. You are to yes. you are to write this post in a neutral fashion. <laughs> uh <laughs> does not even know what that means. <laughs> I will write it in a neutral fashion. Uh, well let me let you me, will let write me it in a this. fashion. Let me commit it. Let me commit this right. The 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 the, the prediction in question um, has two different ways of reading it. Like my uh, my criticism of the of the prediction, Jeremy's favor of the prediction. I promise you that Jeremy and I will be represented fairly in my post. Boom. Okay. But you won't be. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, everyone. (laughs) So, welcome to 2019. We've been Bad Voltage. Thank you very much. (laughs) See ya.